Appreciate it. Absolutely. So feel free, you can take over yep. the screen, it's all yours. Yeah, let me get to the screen. All right. Um, one thing that I always get, because I do run a bunch of quarters, and I think everybody kind of understands coverage, um, and probably a good one to follow with, with uh, Coach Tony, who's a great coach. And if you don't watch Louisiana football, you really need to. Um, they, they do some really good things. Uh, I always enjoy talking to Coach uh, during the off season. Uh, and sometimes during the season when I can get a hold of them. Um, but the one thing that I always get to is like, coach, how do you teach this stuff? Like, this is, this is great uh, that you're doing this. Um, but, but how do I teach it? So all, what I'm going to do is just kind of go through my philosophy on uh, my DB drills uh, and then kind of go, go over a, a few things that I've found to be very helpful for me. Uh, some simple things, but it, the, the thing that I see now, nowadays is, I, I mean, we see a lot of these, these, these trainers and, and camp guru guys, and there's a lot of things going on and a lot of footwork and a lot of ladder drills, and a lot of things like going on like that. And, and um, I think there's a time and a place for that stuff. Um, in, in terms of where I'm at in the, in the state of Texas, we can't work with our kids on a daily basis. So uh, it, it, especially in the summer, we only get an hour with them. And so we've got to really balance how are we going to use that hour scheme wise versus footwork wise. And then talking to, talking to some of my college friends and some people at the higher levels, you know, when do you work footwork? When do you work agility stuff? When do you work that stuff? You know, that stuff really needs to be done in the spring. And so how do those kids supplement that? You know, that, you know, I'm really, you know, so I don't mind my kids going to trainers, but at the same time, like a lot of times I feel like sometimes I'm, I got to correct some bad habits and things like that. And, and, and really what I found in 2018, uh, was we just weren't very good at breaking on the ball and that's a hundred percent on me as a coach because if we're not good on breaking on the ball how are we going to make the play on the ball and so this is kind of the second part of this is when I go through the hex ring drills of, of what we do uh we're starting in the spring of 2019 into the fall where we had 17 interceptions we doubled our interceptions from the year before and a lot of that had to do with uh growth just from the kids but then also, too, I think a lot of it had to do with footwork. So um, my philosophy is game-like movements. If you're doing a bunch of – and it goes back to the kind of the, the ladder drills and things like that. If you're not doing game-like movements and you're not stressing the kids on game situations, even in like something as simple as line drills, then you're doing it wrong. And you're doing them in injustice because – they're not, they're not getting that natural feel. I never want to put a kid in a situation that we're not going to do anything in a game. Uh, and I tell that kid like day one. Uh, so for the first day I showed up at Horn, I got a lot of kids are looking at me and they're like, okay, who's this, who's this guy? You know, and, and the first thing I'm telling them is like, look, just trust me. I'm not going to put you through a bunch of, a bunch of just rinky dink stuff. And we're going to do things that are going to help you move on the field, uh, create efficient athletes. Everything is about body control, body movement, and where your feet are in relation to your body. Um, I think that one of the most underlooked aspects of defensive back play is really just body control and body position and changing your hip movement and changing just the, the little nuances of changing. You know, you can be a stiff athlete, but you can teach that kid to play low. You can teach that kid to work within the mechanics of his own, his own uh, genetics to, to kind of enhance the way that he moves and the way that he does things. And, and a lot of it comes with just foot placement and keeping that nose and shoulders over your toes. So that way you can lean and dip and, and, and do your hips in a certain way. Um, and then I always ask, how is this helping the athlete? Anytime that I come up with a drill or I'm presented with a situation where I need to come up with a drill or we're doing something, I'm always constantly asking myself, how is this helping the athlete? I think a lot of times these kids do drills and it's a self-service to the coach. It's something that we've done all the time. It's something that, oh, well, I did this in Little League. I did this in high school. You know, I did this in the small college that I played for, or I did this in college. And, and, and you know, we never think to, to think about like, okay, well, but is this, is this right? To me, that's called survival bias. And it's something that, that it's kind of a, something that I'm always constantly thinking of. Are we doing this just because, well, we've had success doing it. And so we're just going to keep doing it. Or are we doing it because it's a best practice? I'm always trying to find the best practices. I'm constantly trying to uh, prove myself wrong. Um, and then work what you, what you will do. Um, I don't think that if, for instance, if you're not a big press team and you're spending, you know, 
30, 40 minutes a week on press, you're wasting 40 minutes of practice. Do I, do I think that you need to work press? I mean, if you're going to run it, you need to work it. But I think that too, that we get stuck in these things of like, Oh, I got to work this. I got to work this. I got to work this. And then two, it go. And I think that feeds schematically of, Oh, I got to get to this blitz. I got to get to this blitz. I got to get to this coverage. Oh, we haven't done this. And then at the end of the day, it's like, what are we actually going to do? And then let's put the kids in a situation that they're actually going to be successful in. And then they're going to do it. Uh, so to me, that's my, that's kind of my foundation of philosophy on, on drills. Um, I like line drills. I think it's one, it's easy for organization Two, um, I think it's, it, you can, you put them all in front of you. Uh, you're getting four guys at a time. I like to do it with the safeties in the middle and the corners outside. Now, some of you might be, hey, I don't work with the safeties coach. I, you need to change that right now. You need to be working with your safeties. You need, or if vice versa, if you're the safeties, you need to be working with the corners. I think it's important that they're with each other to start the day. They have to communicate with each other. I always make these guys make calls. I said, I don't care what the call is. Just make a call. And it kind of tells me uh, what they're thinking about and, and what they're, what they're doing. So what I do is I'm the ball, I'm the coach here. And then I have a coach down here that's going to send them back. And so all we do right here, the first drill that we do is actually a step off drill. And you can see how the kids are getting their step offs. Uh, and then they're transitioning into a back pedal. So the first drill is actually just a pedal. So they, they get the, they do their, their re drills and then they back pedal. This is the second drill that we do, which is just a tight weave. So we talk about ladder drills, you know, this to me is, this to me is the ladder drill that we're working. We're working tight weave. And what I'm focused on as a coach is I'm focused on their feet. What I don't want and, and to be uh, this kid right here. Um, this is what I'm looking for. This is a great example. The, the one right here, look at how tight his feet are the whole entire time. Uh, this kid right here, you can see sometimes he takes wide steps. Other times his kind of knees come inside. And so I really work on him, but for the most part, this is a really good group. Uh, these two individuals over here are really good. Uh, in fact, this kid's probably going to end up playing in the major leagues. Uh, he's, a, he's a great athlete. So I, I've been blessed with some great kids. Um, again, going through, you can see here, this kid right here gets on his heels. And so that's what you're looking for. You're looking for body posture. See how, his, he, his, how he's turning his, instead of leaning over, his back is getting straight. And that's what we do not want. Uh, and so, you know, being able to talk to those kids through it, and then we're going to do that. And then we're going to come back doing the same thing. Uh, the second drill, this is called a, a shuffle, shuffle, a shuffle pull. And so we'll end up shuffling them right, left, right, left. And then they just have to turn and pull. And, and what I'm looking for is body posture on the turn. Are they throwing the elbow down? Are they keeping everything near the rib cage? You know, what are they doing with that off foot? Are they planting it and driving and getting off of it? And, you know, I tell the kids, it's like, look, just give me three hard steps. Um, it, you know, I don't need you to sprint. I don't want to burn them out. I think DBs, especially guys, be cognizant of your kids at the defensive back level, especially. We're the ones that are running all the time. The receivers are the ones that get to come run back uh, and get replaced. It, it's the DBs that have to line up again every time. So we do this. This is a shuffle pull drill, and we'll do that coming back. And then I do, I do this into a transition. So you can see right here how he comes up. I don't want that. I want everybody going down. It should just be like a track start. I want the elbow down. I'm telling him like you're at the casino. Uh, you're pulling a slot. This is a good example over here. He does a good job of pulling that, pulling that down. I don't like the, the big movement up, but I do like the movement down uh, and watching them and then they sprint. So again, what, what does this work? You know, for instance, this shuffle, this shuffle pull right here, this is them, you know, playing catch coverage. And then, oh, I got a vertical. Now I got to turn and burn. Now this is speed in my face, kind of that, oh, crap, I got to run. Um, and so that's kind of what that is. So notice we're doing every movement that you're going to get during, during the game. So this is what I call pedal weave. This is the next step. So now we're working the post in the corner. You know, what I'm looking for right here is like this. That for instance, this kid right here is going way too flat. You know, we're not breaking on the out right now. We want to go, we want to go vertical with it, uh, breaking at a 45. Again, these two guys are doing it right. Uh, I want to break at a 45. I don't want to break vertical. You know, I want to try and cap that post. And so, so we work that. And again, notice on each one of these, these guys are getting their step offs. They're getting their read steps, their three-step read, their quick game, their run read. Uh, that's what they're doing right here. Uh, so I think that's important too, to, to reiterate that the early, I think we're so, we're so cognizant of, the later in the, in the down uh, footwork, but we're never, you know, we don't talk enough about what do we do 
uh, at the at the beginning of the play? What do we do? How do I step off? How am I deliberate about the way that I'm stepping off uh, and then moving? Uh, one thing that I found with the younger kids, they have a really hard time of backpedaling uh, sideways. They want to turn their butt and they want to go. Notice how all these kids are sitting here and they're staying square. They're staying relatively square as they're doing this. And so I think that's important. What I would do is just do the, the long weave drill where you get them kind of in a line and they weave, touch the line, weave, touch the line, weave, touch the line, and they work back. That's what I would suggest if, you, if you're having trouble with your younger kids or, or your kids are having a hard time uh, weaving. Like for instance, this kid doesn't even get off the line. You know, so I'm, that's something that I'm telling them right here. You can, you can kind of see me. I'm like, hey, get off the line. Got to get off the line. Okay, then we do center field turn. I know the clip kind of cuts off short. But, again, I want more of this. See how these guys are gaining depth, and then these two guys don't gain depth. So, for me, it's, it's, it's I, want, I want to gain depth. See, he's flat, and then he doesn't gain any depth at all. So, we're getting run by over here, and, but we're not over here. Um, now, I, what I like to do is I raise a number at the end to get their head around. So it's the same drill as this. Now I'm just adding the center field turn into it as well. I'll see if I can get you one with a full view turn. And then they're breaking back in underneath, you know, don't be lazy, you know, run through it three hard steps off of our break. Um, then after this, I transition into open field drills. I think I've got, here we go. That's it. I got my clips messed up. Okay, here we go. So the next thing I do is I bring in these hex rings. Now these, you can see them right here. I, I got these little hex rings. You can get them on Amazon for like $30 and they're an absolute game changer. The kids are so cognizant of where their feet are. And so you can see me doing the drill right here. All we're doing is sitting and then I'm going to plant and drive. And see, this is perfect posture. This is what I want. Notice how my, I'm aligned. I look like a sprinter. Okay, and that's what I want. I want that knee high. I want the toe pointed to where I'm going. I want good posture out of the break. I don't want to break down. Notice how my feet aren't back. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here showing them how I want it done. And then I'm planting and driving. And I tell my kids all the time, you never seen a white boy this smooth. And so, and it too, it, it gets them a little relaxed because they always, they always get frustrated in these drills because their feet are never, their feet are never as good. And the old man always makes them look bad. Um, so now we're, now we're going to transition. And again, what I like about this is like for my taller athletes, like for instance, this kid's 6'2", this kid's 6'2". You know, they got to really understand where their feet are and then they got to think about it. So they're going to be slow. Fat. They're going to be slow at first and that's okay. But I want them to understand like, okay, look, once they feel that muscle memory, now they're getting it going and now they're getting it done. Now this kid over here is about 5'7". I mean, look at him, pop, pop, and now he's out. You know, so he, he's one of our, my better players. He was, re, he was really good for us, and he, he's going to be a great college player. Um, but, again, watching this. So all we're doing is, is doing different drills, working, working a shuffle, shuffle breakdown, doing the same thing with the next group. Now we're, now we're going to go through and we're going to – what I like to do is work zone turn and man turn and have them work their hips. So they're keeping their feet together and they've really got to plant and they've got to drive up. This works too if you do a lot of press bail. Uh, this works on that kind of that footwork of shuffle, shuffle, open the hips, keep that shoulder down. You can see who keep, he, he keeps his shoulder down to the receiver, able to plant and drive and come out. Most, most of these kids do a really good job. In fact, all these guys do. These are these were my starters last year for the most part. Plant drive, getting off the ball. And this to me, again, I cannot, I cannot express enough. This was a game changer for us in the offseason. Um, and I just kept this on my desk too. So like if any of them wanted to do footwork drills when we didn't have football, they could just come and get it. Uh, and I had I had the six hex rings in there. Let's see if I got another drill in here before I move on. So again, then I, then I just have them accelerate through it. So just accelerate and, and be, be creative about it and just trying to get them to move. You know, I do one where they start facing this way and they got to work through and then turn and go. And so they're kind of like turning as they go and then, and then go. And so uh, if you ever have questions about, hey, I'm, I, I've got these hex rings, can you show me some drills to do? I don't, I don't mind showing you different drills. All right, now after this, we transition to 2v2. And so right here, we're just working, we're working read. This is our read drill working through these guys. Now we've actually done it here in the state of Texas. We got to do social distancing during practice. So what we actually do is we, we still do this, but we back the receivers up by about five yards. Uh, and so we kind of work our fits through this. So we've been able to do this even in the pandemic. 
Uh, and, and really what I like to do in the redrill is make sure that these guys understand as in a traditional split how hard it actually is to come off the hash and work to the fade so that maybe we don't need to run cover two all the time. Then maybe we can run some quarters uh, and kind of get that sense of urgency. So we'll go to 2v2. This helps us really because we're so much split field quarters. I mean, obviously, if you know who I am at all, uh, you know I'm split field quarters, uh, and that's all pretty much all that we do. And so you got to be able to you got to be able to play um, all of your stuff, uh, eat, whether it's man. We run a bunch of five five man pressures with half field zones. So we're man to one side and and zone to the other. Uh, this is another good example of read steps. Getting your read step, see speed in the face. Now I'm going to turn, get in phase. Same thing with the safety. So we're working these. We're working this two v two the whole time. Uh, and so we, I, I mean, I could go through all these different clips, but you can see here's dagger, you know, working on that corner. I'm a little different just to go over this one. I put this one in here because I do like the corner inside leverage in, in read in to read. I don't like them outside leverage unless we're pressing or unless he's inside our divider rule. Uh, so just kind of showing you how we play those inside routes with that vertical right there. So uh, that's pretty much, you know, what we do on a daily basis. Now, outside of like special schematic things or anything like that, that's what we're doing. We're doing our daily muffs. We're going to our hex rings uh, in fall camp. Once we get into the season, I toss the hex rings because we just don't have time for it anymore um, unless I feel like we need it. But that's our spring. That's our fall. Uh, I know some of you guys, you guys uh, work, work during the summer uh, with football. We, we get, like I said, we get about an hour worth of skill work. So we're doing the hex rings and then we're doing 2v2 and we're doing pattern matching. We're just matching, 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 matching. What I like to do too is I go back through uh, self-scout and I say, where are the top two, two receiver routes that we get? And I just, I list them 10, 15, I don't care. And then I just cycle through them all cycle through them all every day. And I'll start on the top of the list one day, I'll start in the bottom, I'll start in the middle, and that way we're getting it, and I move hashes. And that way, by the time we get to the season, man, I mean, it's just like, they're like robots. Um, they know how to line up to different splits. They know what to do with the route combinations, and they see things before I do. And I think that's when it really comes, is when those kids come to you and it's like, hey, I didn't check this because I saw this. And then I'm like, good, because that's the same thing I saw from the sideline. Because, you know, a lot of times we yell and they can't hear us. So, uh, so again, if anybody has any questions about this, you can, you can find my stuff on matchquarters.com. I'm moving matchquarters over to matchquarters.substack.com. Um, the content that's on matchquarters right now will always be there. It's not going to change. But again, you can also check out uh, my four books on Amazon as well. Awesome, Cody. Thanks so much for coming on, man. Really appreciate it.